Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna make a little sublimation sippy cup for a friend of mine whose son is getting out of the bottle stage. So I received a box of four of these sippy cups. Now these came from Mokaru, and that's a company that sent me a heat press a while back. So I'm gonna use that heat press today as well. So in the box, I received four sippy cups, four of the bottoms, and then four of these shrink wraps. And I'm not gonna use the shrink wraps. And then in addition to getting this sippy cup type handle, they also sent this more traditional lid. So, when your child no longer needs this, you can trade it out for a regular top. And I thought that was a great idea. All right, so let's go ahead and measure this so I can get my sublimation image printed. All right, so on a ruler, sometimes there's a little excess space here. So you need to account for that and not just assume that the end of this to the one inch mark is one inch because there's clearly some extra room there. So what I'm going to do is called burning an inch. I'm going to take it down to the one inch mark and it's going to the sixth and an eighth mark so it's five and an eighth inches long. So using decimal like the computer does that'd be 5.125 inches tall Now I can't find my soft measuring tape, so I'm just going to use this. It's like a washi tape. And I'm going to go all the way around. And then I'm going to go ahead and tear off where those two meet. Now just in case this isn't accurate, now I'm going to measure this. Now this is not the ideal way to do things. You really want your soft measuring tape but I'm gonna to have to improvise. Okay, that's about eight and seven eighths, and so that would be 8.875 around. All right, let's go ahead and cut this down and see if I got it the right dimensions. Now the reason I can leave some white at the bottom is this is beveled. And so it's going to curve under there, and so if it starts turning white under there, that's okay. Okay, I think that's going to work. I can go ahead and take that white strip off. And then it was a little tall, so I'm taking just a little bit extra off. Now to prep my cup, I went ahead and used a paper towel, some rubbing alcohol, and I cleaned it off really nicely. Okay, so here's the way it'll go. So what I want to do is just put it against my cup, and then I'm more particular about the top than the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put the top of the cup down on the table. Now I need to make sure there's no white on the side I have against the tumbler. And I have a tiny excess, so I'm gonna just be careful and cut a tiny little strip off. Because I'll be honest, I was a little distracted when I was doing this. So this way I know for sure there's absolutely no white whatsoever over here. All right, so that's the side I want against my tumbler, and then I'll just fold my other side over it. Well, it didn't seem very straight, so I'm just gonna straighten that out. Okay, so here's the top. That's what I'm giving my most attention to. So I'm gonna adhere it to the side that's on the top, squeeze them together, and then really stick that down.
Then I'll do the same on the top half and the bottom half. Okay, then I want to make sure that my design goes all the way to the top of the cup. And it does, and there's a tiny, tiny bit of extra above it. If there's not, you can put your hand in your cup and kind of shove on it to try to get that to come up some. I think mine's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap these just like I do all my other cups. If you have any issues with your cups ghosting or puckering, then you might go back and watch a couple of videos where I really talk about it and I show you exactly how I do it. But once you've seen that, for me to take all that time to re-talk about it, I think you'd get bored. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Now I think the last tape I put on here was what was coming off the roll. It's not as sticky, so it's not holding down very well. So I'm going to just put one more strip up there. All right, that is better. Now I'm going to rub along the top. and try to make sure that I have really good contact between the top of the paper and the top of the cup. Same way at the bottom and then along the seam. All right, let's get the tumbler press out, get that heating up, and see how this works out. Now this is the Mokaro press that I was talking about, and before I even plug it in, I wanna see if it's set at the right pressure. I assume these cups, well I know these cups are smaller around than the tumbler because of the dimensions that we just used. So I'm just going to use these two knobs, tighten the pressure up. Now it doesn't have to be extremely tight, but it needs to have a nice snug fit. All right, when I press on it from the sides, it is not moving, so I think that'll be good. I'll turn it on and get it preheating. Now this is Celsius temperature, so it might look weird. Here's the seam. I'm going to go ahead and use this paper cradle. And then I want to start the seam either at the back or the front. Usually I make my paper cradle just a little bit longer. And then the countdown starts when I close it. So I'm going to do it 50 seconds, then I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees, do it 50 more seconds, then I think I'll rotate it one more time and do it 20. Usually I press four times, but this press is closed all the way around this tumbler, so I don't feel I need that fourth press. Well, I accidentally let it go about five seconds longer than I wanted to, but hopefully it'll be okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And then I like to go ahead and unwrap these just as soon as I can. So I'm just going to snip the top of the tape so that I can peel it off. Then let's go ahead and peek and make sure, ooh, that's hot. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, wanted to make sure we didn't need to process that any longer. Well, where did I snip that? There we go. All right. 
Let's see the big reveal. So cute. That is really, really cute. So while we're waiting on that to cool down, let me show you my paper. Now this is HTB Ron. This has become one of my very favorites. I've used a lot of papers and I really haven't had bad experiences. But on this one, what I have found is the ink doesn't come through the back side. And that has to be something to do with the manufacturing of the paper, a coating on the back or something. But you can see there's no ink on this butcher paper that I was using for blowout paper. Now I'll still use it just to be safe, but I really like the fact that that's not coming through the back of the paper. All right, so here's the tumbler. My seam's pretty good. It almost lined up. <laughs> the top looks really nice. And then the name Gideon looks really nice. Now, I didn't do a perfect job at the bottom. It's nice. It's passable. But I've done better. All in all, I think this turned out gorgeous. I think that my friend's going to love it, and hopefully Gideon does too. Now, one thing I didn't mention is, and I'm not sure how I got so lucky that this worked out almost perfectly, but what I should have done is I should have made sure that the name was straight in the front when this was tight. Now, it's barely off. I just forgot to do that step. So when you're doing this, make sure you take that step. Now, I'll put a link to these tumblers, the tumbler press, the paper, just like I always do. I'll put the links in the video description. Those are affiliate links, and so if you use those, I receive a little bit to support the channel, which I appreciate, but really, I just thank you for watching the videos. So I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and until the next video, bye-bye.